It's Cruise Fever here. We had a chance to spend a night on Queen Mary at Long Beach, uh, the cruise port there, going on a carnival cruise. Decided to get there a day early, spend one night on this ship hotel, and had an amazing time. So I want to do a quick tour of Queen Mary. It is not exhaustive since some of the areas were closed. There was a conference going on as well, so I couldn't get into every area of the ship. Uh, but wanted to give a brief history and then kind of show you what it's like on board. The Queen Mary was the flagship of Cunard and White Star Lines. It sailed from 1936 to 1967 across the Atlantic uh, from Southampton to New York City. It has the maritime record right now for carrying the most passengers, over 16,000. This was during World War II when the ship was used to carry Allied troops across the Atlantic. It was known then as the Grey Ghost for its gray paint and its fast speeds. It traveled at over 31 knots. The Queen Mary is now permanently moored in Long Beach, California. And here we are about to enter the ship. This is what you'll see when you first get on the Queen Mary. And here's the lobby up ahead and the desk where you will check in for your room and also check out at the end of your stay. The carpet is not original. Originally, all the floors were a, a mixture of cork and rubber, a nice grippy surface that they would have and something that was easy to clean as well. There's a sign to remind you to keep it quiet throughout the hallway. Sound does travel easily through the walls. Here's some of the original elevators. There's only a few that are still operational. The ones that are, are original. They go very slowly, but it's kind of like walking back into history going through these elevators. You see here it's decorated for Christmas. I went shortly after Christmas and they have a little North Pole setting here, but this is right off the lobby. They do have a computer and printer if you need to print out your itinerary or even for your crews coming up. That room in front of you is where you would buy tickets originally for your upcoming sailings. And this is the fitness room that was used on Queen Mary. The checkered floor is like it was back in the day. You see it has new equipment and here's some of the original equipment in some of these side rooms. You can see what it was like. There are several vending machines uh, throughout. There are only three decks that are used for cabins right now uh, as part of the hotel. But there are a few of those Coke machines and ice machines throughout. You can see the beautiful wood paneling on the, uh, throughout the hallways. Right now we're going to check out uh, the room that I stayed in down this little corridor. There are 347 first class cabins. On Queen Mary originally there was a second and third class, but none of those cabins are still used for the hotel. They're used to, for other spaces now. So this is on deck B, number 404. This is a deluxe stateroom. The portholes are operational. This is on the port side of the ship. You can also get a view showing Long Beach on the other side of the ship if you'd like. You could see the Art Deco design, uh, kind of reflective of the 1930s. There have been a few modern changes made that you'll notice in the cabin, but a lot of things kind of are reminiscent back to the 1930s uh, when the ship was first built. The ship has already gone through multi-million dollar renovations and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. Uh, it's a large, old ship, so it takes a lot of work to keep it up. So not everything is in pristine, perfect condition. There are a few places where the paint might be peeling or the plaster is coming off a little bit. Uh, but it still does, like I said, take you back into that time frame, like you're walking into a time capsule. Uh, but you'll see there's a hair dryer in the bathroom and uh, a few modern conveniences. And you'll see some of these original vents. Uh, this one's in the bathroom and there's a couple more in the bedroom here. So back in the main room, you see there is a, a nice flat screen TV. One of the original fans up there on the wall, it is not operational, uh, but it's there to, again, make you feel like what it would have been like back in the day. You can see there is an ironing board and iron in this wardrobe. And some more of the decor that is consistent with the time period. As I mentioned, you can open and close uh, these portholes. I think they were open just slightly to let in a little breeze.
There are a few places where you can plug in your electronics and charge up your phone. There's one on the lamp here, a couple outlets there, and then there's one on this radio that you see on that built-in shelf. That is a king-size bed with a pillow top mattress. Found it to be very comfortable. And I know there are a lot of reports about this ship being haunted. You can see all kinds of videos on YouTube about that. Uh, whether you want to believe it or not is up to you. But I found the night very quiet and calming and I slept great. I didn't hear any bumps in the night or anything, but again, I was very tired from flying into Long Beach from the East Coast. So that had something to do with it, I'm sure. All the light switches are going to look like this, and you do have a, a locking mechanism on the door as well. I didn't try the room service, but there is some in-room dining options you could see on this menu here if you'd like to pause the video. I know it might be hard to see uh, the prices and everything, but you can pause it to take a look at the different offerings for the dine-in menu. And we'll take a, a look at some of the other restaurants on board the ship as well in this video. So here's another look at some of the halls and corridors throughout Queen Mary. And you'll see these throughout the stairwell so you can see where you are on the ship. It is easy to get lost. It is an 80,000 ton ship, uh, but just navigating it back and forth and some areas are closed. So uh, it can be a little bit confusing at first. So they do give you a map when you first get on the ship of all the decks so you can look at the different aspects of the ship as well. This is going towards the observation bar, which is through those double doors. It was closed at the time, so sorry I don't have any video of that. It has great views over the bow of the ship. This is a practice room, a music practice room, where the performers would warm up their vocals before performing. And here we see the medallion of Queen Elizabeth and her portrait there at the bottom of the steps going into the promenade. This is where first-class passengers would shop and where they would uh, hang out and gather during uh, on Sundays for church services, the other classes were allowed to come up into this area of the ship as well. Cary Grant used to love sailing this ship and brag about it with his friends. He called it the eighth wonder of the world. It is also known as the ship of many woods. Over 50 different kinds of woods are used just in the interior design throughout the ship. So there are several shops throughout this promenade area. You can also buy your tour tickets uh, here and behind this area. There are a lot of different tour options available, so I highly recommend you check out at least one of them while you're on Queen Mary. And this picture shows some of the, I think it's 39 different woods that are used on the ship. And here's one of the shops along the way with a lot of historic trinkets that you can buy on the Queen Mary. I am not a history buff, but I do love history. It fascinates me. So just seeing these old stairwells, this is some of the original flooring, and just the smells uh, just kind of bring you back to that time period. This area of the ship is really neat. This is where you're going to stand while waiting for your tour guide. And there's a lot of these ship models that you can look at while you're waiting. Uh, they, have, do, they do have a model of Queen Mary itself. They have uh, Normandy, the French vessel. Um, there's Queen Mary II there. And so it's really neat to kind of read about the different ships, some of them dating back to the 1930s and the competition between uh, Normandy and Queen Mary. And those two ships went back and forth with their record of crossing the Atlantic as fast as they could. This is a cutout section of the Normandy, uh, which is now no longer in existence. It was marooned in New York. Now we'll take a look at Promenade Cafe. This is where I had breakfast. You can also have lunch here. I think it cost 18 to, or $20. It was kind of a buffet style. I made my own waffle. You have eggs and bacon and coffee and all those different things. So very convenient, a little expensive, but nice to eat right there on the ship and have these great views out over Long Beach. This is Chelsea Crowder House and Bar, where you can get some seafood and some good old clam chowder, if you'd like. And 
now we'll take a look at some of the grandeur of Queen Mary. That is an actual, um, it was an operational fireplace on this ship that you see in the background there, which was very rare for a ship because the fires is the biggest danger that you face on a ship like this. Uh, but it was used to actually suck some of the smoke from the cigars kind of out the flue, and it, so it was operational. Here you see some of the amazing, uh, just the simple beauty in the Art Deco design and the wood paneling along the walls. And this area of the ship is the Royal Salon. You could just imagine how regal this must have been to walk into this part of the ship, how huge, uh, just the expansive the space was, the tall ceilings, and they would have dignitaries here and royalty and uh, musicians. The Queen Mary had their own orchestra that would play in this part of the ship. The Queen Mary cost about half as much to build as Normandy, so Normandy had a lot more flair. There's 24 karat gold on the railings and everything. Uh, but Queen Mary had a simplistic beauty that a lot of people appreciated and actually favored over Normandy. There on the back you see that map of the world that would actually show where the ship was in relation to its journey. And here you see more of the artwork uh, on the doorway and above, just the, the, the original artwork there on the wall. And this is a wedding chapel that was added a little later. The troops would actually use this room as a smoking lounge uh, when it was used to carry the Allied forces across the Atlantic. And this is on promenade deck. It was covered like this when it was originally built as well, but it had these windows all along the sides. You had these great views of the ocean. That is an original bell of Queen Mary, the largest that they have. There's a Starbucks, and you can get some ice cream here on the ship as well. So uh, there's your Starbucks, so you get your coffee fix before you start your day. And this gazebo is on the sun deck, this area used for weddings and other events as well. You can see Carnival Imagination in the background there. And we're still walking on the sun deck here. There is a, another restaurant, really fine dining restaurant called Sir Winston's. It's only open a couple times a week, so look at the schedule for that if you'd like to eat there. And on the sun deck there's a staircase where you can see an exhibit about Princess Diana and a few of uh, the things that she owned and wore. It's closed right now, so I couldn't get in uh, during that time. Now I'm going up to the sports deck where we have the bridge. And again, I couldn't get in there either. It's open, I, I should have been there in the afternoon. Um, I'm here in the morning and it's not open yet. Uh, and I had to go to my cruise later on. So I do suggest you get there, give yourself a full day to spend on the ship to take the tours and see everything that Queen Mary has to offer. Uh, but there's the bridge from the outside. Hopefully you can see a little bit of it in there. And there it is at nighttime. You can see there are three smokestacks on Queen Mary. They were replaced by the originals with just aluminum um, castings. And they're repurposed so the insides are used for different things now. And if you were very wealthy or had some very good connections, you could eat here at Veranda Grill. This is where a lot of celebrities ate, or like I said, people with a lot of money. You could only eat here once during a crossing of the Atlantic and you had to get your reservation well in advance. Um, and it was all tricked out with all kinds of lighting. They even had these flashing lights that would coordinate with the music. I don't know how they did that back in the 30s, uh, but somehow they did. And uh, you can see some of the space there. I'm now gonna go down to the engine room. This is just outside the engine room where you can see some of the artifacts from Queen Mary from back in the day and I don't know a lot about this space, but it still fascinates me. So we're just gonna walk you through the engine room. You might know what you're looking at way more than I will, so I'll just kinda let you take a look. Uh, there are some ghost tours that take place down in the engine room with stories about things that people have heard and seen while being down here. The ship did have four steam turbines that were capable of producing about 160,000 horsepower. Uh, and its maiden voyage it actually reached a top speed of 33 knots. Although going at this speed did use a lot of fuel, Queen Mary and Normandy were in that race for the Blue Ribbon to see who could cross the Atlantic the fastest. And you can actually see one of the propellers uh, through a 
little cutout in the museum exhibit so you can see under the water and see the propeller in the water. It's really neat. So that's my tour of Queen Mary. Again, it is not exhaustive, but I hope it gives you an idea of what it's like to be on this floating hotel. That's a really neat experience before you go on your cruise to really appreciate what it was like to sail the oceans back then before going on one of these modern cruise ships. So if you have a chance to go on it, let us know in the comments below how you liked it. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.